Hey guys, hello and welcome to Total Health with Dr. Nick. Today I want to talk to you about the most vilified nutrient in the entire world. I mean, this one is, this is, this is like the villain where, where the guy's got the curly mustache, like this guy right here where he's, he's tying the damsel to the tracks waiting for the train to come along. I mean, this guy is the bad guy. This guy is the one that strikes fear and everything. And that is cholesterol. Dun, dun, dun. Sorry, I thought it would sound good. Anyway, so cholesterol is the single most vilified nutrient in the entire American diet, but should it be? What's the real truth behind cholesterol? Is it really to be vilified? Is it really the nutrient you want to avoid, or is it getting a bum rap? Is it something that's actually healthy for you, but somewhere along the line, it got a bad reputation. So today we're gonna to be talking about all the different benefits of cholesterol. What is it? What is this mystery substance? What is it made of? What does LDL mean? What does HDL mean? And are, and are they dangerous? Is one more dangerous than the other? Is good cholesterol really good and bad cholesterol really bad? We're gonna be talking about all of that today. So jump right in and guys, if you like what we're talking about, please make sure you like it. You share it, you comment, but more importantly, you subscribe. And make sure you have that little bell there so you can get any notifications of any time we post a video. So let's dive right in. Like I said, this is the most vilified nutrient in the entire American diet, if not the world. But is it for good reason or is it getting a bum rap? Well, let's jump right in. Who's the real villain here, all right? This guy. Ansel Keys is the real villain here, and I don't mean chilling like a villain. This guy's really a villain, in my opinion, and so many others, because he's the one who started the whole lipid hypothesis. What he did was he did a study called the Seven Country Study, and he looked at seven countries, and he checked to see if there was any correlation between saturated fat and heart disease. There was only one problem with this. It wasn't seven countries. It was more like 22, 23, and he really cherry picked the data. He didn't include all the countries where people had lots of saturated fat and yet had low rates of heart disease. So he totally, totally fudged the numbers into a way that got the exact outcome that he wanted. And for that reason, he's a villain because he has vilified fat in the American diet and caused more health concerns, more health problems, I would say probably than anyone in history. So this is a, a little snapshot of his study. And what he did was he basically drew a line between the countries that he wanted to draw a line between and really omitted all the ones over here that didn't fall into his preconceived idea of what he was looking for. Fortunately, there's a lot of people out there that caught on to it and started writing books and started putting out information. And there's a lot of books out there now about the cholesterol myth. I mean, a cholesterol con, the real truth behind cholesterol, and is it really as bad as people say? So I encourage you to read a lot of these books because every single day someone will come in my office and they'll say, Dr. Nick, you know, my doctor told me my cholesterol is high. And I'm like, what is it? And they tell me it's like 210. I'm thinking, that is not high. I had my... <laughs> I just got a test done about uh, two months ago where I was getting a life insurance policy done and they checked my cholesterol and the results came back saying I was high because my cholesterol was 230 and I just laughed because I'm thinking that's not high at all, that's nothing. I mean you want to talk high, you're talking 350 and up. 230 is not high at all, but yet so many of you come back with this diagnosis from your doctor, the test results are in, they want to put you on statin drugs and you're hearing all kinds of conflicting information. I give all my patients really the most cutting edge information on what statin drugs are about, and we're gonna do another video on that because there are risks to lowering cholesterol. You didn't know that, did you? There are definite risks to having cholesterol too low, and we're gonna be talking about that on future videos. But like I said, it's out there. Now fortunately, the mainstream media is also starting to catch up with this because back in the 80s or so, they were saying cholesterol was no way. Don't touch cholesterol. Stay away from it. Avoid it. Then all of a sudden, well, maybe cholesterol's okay. And then over here in the latest one, I think this one's from 2014, they said, you know what? We had it all wrong. This was absolutely wrong information. Cholesterol is not the problem. It's not leading to heart disease. It's not leading to, you know, congestive heart failure. It's not the culprit. The fat is not the culprit. That we had this all wrong and now they're finally coming around. So anyway, what is cholesterol? What is this mystery substance? Well, it's really a waxy-like substance. It's made mainly by the liver, and we're gonna get into this in a little bit. 
your liver makes about 75 to 80 percent of all the cholesterol in your body. So hey, your body knows something. It's not all coming in from your diet. In fact, 60% of your brain is made, by, made from cholesterol. So it's important, hey, if your brain is made of cholesterol, maybe we should be looking at this nutrient like maybe it's a good thing. In fact, the myelin sheath surrounding your nerves, and think of your nerves as like wires. Your wires have the metal inside and then it's surrounded by a coating. And that coating insulates the, the wire, but your nerve has the same thing. It's got this myelin sheath around it that's made from cholesterol. So nerve fibers can contain cholesterol. It's used for tissue repair. Yes, anytime there's damage in your body, especially in the arterial walls, your body is sending cholesterol there to help repair. It's a repair substance. It's an antioxidant. It's used to make vitamin D. Guys, vitamin D is so vitally important for overall health, but especially cancer prevention. We're not getting enough of it anymore because we're not outside, but guys, we can't risk not having the cholesterol that we need to make the vitamin D. See, when you sit out in that sun, the rays that hit your skin are hitting cholesterol within your skin. Your skin then converts it, or your, your body then converts it to the usable form or the active form of vitamin D. You have to have the cholesterol in your skin to be able to convert sunlight to vitamin D. Not only that, you need vitamin D to digest or to utilize your fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K. You have to have it. Not only that, we always hear there's good and bad cholesterol. Well, what does that really mean? First of all, what does LDL and HDL and all these L's mean? Well, I'll tell you what, they're not even cholesterol. Did you know that HDL is not cholesterol? Did you know that? Or what about LDL? It's not cholesterol either. HDL and LDL are transport molecules. They're not cholesterol at all. So when your doctor tells you that your HDL is too high or your LDL is too high, you're thinking, oh my gosh, I, I've got to lower that because cholesterol is too high. It's not even cholesterol. It's a high density lipoprotein. It's a low density lipoprotein. What that means is a lipoprotein is a fat combined with a protein. You see, fats don't do well in your blood. Your blood has high amounts of water. Fats don't do well in that. Try mixing water and oil together. They don't mix. So what your body does, because it is so infinitely designed and intelligently designed, it combines a protein molecule with the fat so that way it can carry it around. Well, each one has a very specific purpose. So there is no good or bad cholesterol. Yes, you heard that. There is no good or bad cholesterol. It's just cholesterol. Each one has a specific purpose. HDL's purpose is to transport cholesterol that's out in your body and take it back to the liver. Well, why does it do that? Because your body knows that cholesterol is an extremely valuable compound and it needs it. And rather than remanufacture it or make new, it just recycles the old cholesterol. It also removes cholesterol from the arterial walls. So it goes in there and takes some of that cholesterol out of the arterial walls so it doesn't embed. Now, I know you've been told that the LDL is the villain, you know, it's the, it's the guy on the tracks. Well, here's the thing, LDL, I, my opinion, is actually even the better one. Because what LDL does, it takes the cholesterol and brings it to your cells. Now, from the liver, it takes it to the cells. So once again, the HDL brings it into the liver, it's then converted and given to LDL, and the LDL takes it out. And what does the LDL do with it? Your LDL cholesterol takes it to your cells so that you can make steroid hormones. Your estrogen, ladies, your testosterone, men, your cortisol, your stress hormone. You have to have cholesterol as a precursor to make your hormones. Without cholesterol, you can't make hormones. Without cholesterol, you can't make cells. Every single cell in your body, all 100 trillion of them, have a cell membrane around it that's made of cholesterol. So you cannot make a single human cell without cholesterol. That sounds pretty important. So not only does your body try to recycle it because it's so vitally important, but your body then uses it to create all different hormones that you need to live, cells that you need to live. Not only that, it's used to make tissue repair from it during inflammation. See, our bodies, our American diet, or what I've called the standard American diet, which means sad, okay? The standard American diet is loaded with inflammatory foods. And because of that, 
It's causing inflammation in our bodies, and that is the leading cause of why cholesterol can turn bad. So see, cholesterol is not the villain like we think it is. Instead, it just happens to be at the scene of the crime, but it's not the villain there. It's like saying, hey, if firemen show up to a fire, or you go over and you see a fire and there's firemen standing around, did the firemen create the fire? No, of course not. But the firemen were there to help, but yet they were the one blamed for the fire, right? Well, that's like blaming cholesterol for clogging the arteries, when the main culprit is inflammation, huh? What do you think of that? A pretty good set of uh, special effects. Spielberg's got nothing on me, I'll tell you that. But anyway, what we're finding now with inflammation, it's a major cause of disease in the body. So what they're saying is it's causing cancer, atherosclerosis, heart disease. It's causing, you know, Alzheimer's. It's causing all kinds of different diseases in the body. And I'm not talking about inflammation where we see a swollen knee or a swollen ankle if you twist one. I'm talking about chronic systemic inflammation that is all over your body. I mean, it's literally like your body's on fire. So once again, where does this inflammation come from? Because like I said, cholesterol is not the villain. Yes, it was at the scene of the crime, but it's not the villain. It's the inflammation that's the villain. Well, where is that coming from? Well, like I said earlier, 75 to 80 percent of the cholesterol in your body is made by the liver. In fact, that's why they give you statin drugs. Did you know that? Statin drugs damage the liver. They mess with the enzymes that are in the liver that create the cholesterol. So that's why they have to test your cholesterol levels about every six months or so because they want to monitor how much damage you're causing to your liver. How does that sound? I mean, <laughs> they're just destroying it, but they want to make sure they keep it in check enough that it can still function a little bit. But yet, they're always looking to see what kind of damage is happening because they know that the majority of your cholesterol is made by your liver, shipped out into your bloodstream to the rest of your body by what? LDL cholesterol. That's right. 20 to 25 percent is coming from your diet. But here's the thing. It's very specific things in your diet that cause the LDL of cholesterol to be a problem, and here it is. Ready? So how do LDLs go bad? Well, wait, wait. You said earlier that LDL isn't bad. It's not. LDL is not bad, okay? But you can take a good cholesterol and make it bad, okay? Just like you could take a good oil and make it bad by cooking it past its smoking point. Now it's a rancid, oxidized, inflammatory oil. You could do the same thing with LDL. How do we do that? By what you eat. <clears throat> now. As I said, your liver makes something called a VLDL, a very low density lipoprotein. That's what VLDL means. It then can go one of two ways. It can either make a very light, fluffy particle, a light, like cottony, fluffy particle, low density lipoprotein that's larger, larger than 25 nanometers. And when it's larger than 25 nanometers, it's a good cholesterol. It just floats through the bloodstream. It just goes through the arteries, no problem. And when you eat vegetables, that's the kind that you produce. So when you eat healthy foods like saturated fats, like healthy fats, not your, your vegetable oils, but go back and watch some of the videos I did on saturated fats and healthy fats. When you eat that kind of diet loaded up with your, your nutrient-dense foods like your vegetables, okay, that will produce the right kind of uh, LDL protein, uh, cholesterol. When you eat grains, which is what we're told to eat, right? Your healthy whole grains. So when you eat grains, they're the culprit. The grains are the ones that are producing the smaller, less than 25 nanometer size particles, the tiny little one. So in this case here, size matters. Smaller LDL particles, they lead to the heart disease. So let me summarize this. Your body makes LDL cholesterol in your liver. It sends it out as VLDL. Depending on what you eat, whether you eat vegetables or grains, are going to determine whether they make light, fluffy particles or small, dense particles. The small, dense particles, here's the problem. When you take in too many sugars, too many grains, it can cause abrasions in your arteries. It can cause ulcerations. Those ulcerations now are sticky. These smaller particles can embed inside the walls of the arteries. And when they embed in those grooves, they get rancid, they oxidize, they go bad, just like a bad oil can. When they go bad, now they're a problem, okay? So, once again, guys, cholesterol is not the issue. Cholesterol is your friend, it's good for you, you absolutely need it, once again, for brain function, for hormone function, for vitamin synthesis. 
Vitamin D, vitamin A, D, E, and K, you need it for all these things. You need it for nerve function. You need it to make every single cell in your body. So take in your cholesterol, eat your healthy fats, go back and watch the video I did on healthy fats, and guys, don't worry about your cholesterol. We're gonna talk about this in other videos as far as how to measure cholesterol properly, and really, what does low cholesterol do? What kind of damage can that do? So guys, I hope you liked the video. If you did, once again, you know the drill, you know what to do. Please like, comment, and share. Let me know what you thought. Let me know what your comments are. I always like to answer comments. I always like to answer people who are you know, subscribing to my channel. And guys, subscribe. More importantly, do that, please. Put on that little bell, jingle that little bell there so that way you get notifications. And once again, guys, I hope this is great information for you. If so, share it out to friends. Get it to someone who you know of who's panicking about their cholesterol, but they can be rest assured that it's going to be okay. Help is on the way. So anyway, guys, thanks for subscribing, and I hope you liked the video. Have a blessed day. Take care. Bye-bye.